first in to come and say they need a couch can have it, okay? Otherwise, it'll be gone somewhere to a good home. Right, up. next week we're starting a series on the book of Galatians in the life of our church, Gospel Life or Life in the Spirit. I encourage you to get a head start. You can read the first couple of chapters this week. But this morning, we're actually taking a week out, a bit of a time out in between series at the start of the new year to talk about the season we've been in as a church and the season that we're entering as a church. So if you're visiting, this is not a normal thing we would do. Normally you get a kind of sermon from the Bible, so partly sorry about that, but also might give you an insight into our church as well. Back in about 2016, our church embarked on a journey of coming back to life, revitalising, and that was to do with our building needed revitalising and our church itself, the church life needed revitalising. And we adopted this logo here of being a living church in the living city. I don't know if it's possible to have that up the back there or not, um, if I can. So I don't turn around all the time. But this Living City project has been going on. It was a big thing back then. And we were kind of in the middle of it, in between Hill Street redevelopment and the city redevelopment. And we said, at the same time as the city was coming back to life, we were going to come back to life and be a living church, a church that was alive. And we began that and we adopted that. And over the last six years, it's kind of happened, in a sense. It's not perfect, but it's kind of happened. The church has come back to life. There's been a great sense of unity, and there still is. There's been new people and baptisms and the building has changed and young people and all that sort of thing. But now, recently, as that era has sort of happened, we began to think about what does the future look like? And we just feel that it's time to move on from that living city revitalisation type of idea into more of a season of maturity and strengthening and uh, deepening. So looking forward in this next season, we want to simply focus on being a place, being a church community where us and people in our community and our friends and those sorts of people can connect and explore and grow together. Connect and explore and grow. A place to connect with God. A place to connect with God and with each other as well in the life of our church in deeper ways. Connect with God. Now, Jesus said in John 15, if you remain in me, remain connected to me, you can bear much fruit. But apart from me, disconnected from me, you can do nothing. You might appear to do, but you can't. And then the same uh, last supper night, he also spoke about a new commandment. I give you love one another as I have loved you. That idea of connecting with each other in love and connecting with God. A place to connect, a place where people can find that sense of connection with God and each other. And a place to explore uh, fruitfulness. As I said, John 15, apart from me, you can uh, do nothing. A place to explore as well. Explore the Christian faith and the intricacies of it and the questions we have about it and the big questions of life. Explore those things. Meaning and purpose and life and death and identity and love and relationships. We want to be a safe place to ask serious questions and get thoughtful answers. I think we are, but we want to make sure that we continue to do that in meaningful ways. A place where people can come and they don't have to understand everything or agree with everything, but they can um, be connected and begin to explore and find answers for things. And a place to grow. A place to grow into maturity in Christ. Growth in character and giftedness and understanding and love and relationships and fruitfulness. You know, there's a uh, passage that Frank eventually read <laughs> from Ephesians 4. It had beautiful images in it of the church being built up and in love and serving together and being one body that was flourishing and mature and uh, all those sorts of ideas. And it's a beautiful image of the body of Christ, the church built up. I was listening to a podcast this week, as I do, from a lady who's a uh, sociologist, I think, in America, an essayist, whatever, that must get paid to write articles. Um, And she was just talking to John Anderson, former Deputy Prime Minister, about the fact that the Western world particularly is facing an epidemic of loneliness and unhappiness, particularly in younger generations, but right throughout the generations. People are unanchored. All the studies, this is not just an opinion, all the studies, all the research shows this stuff. Craving social connection and community and answers to questions of meaning and identity. Who am I? Why am I here? All that sort of thing. And we have an opportunity, as does every church, to be a place where people can find answers to the deepest questions of life that people are struggling to find answers for. It was interesting, at the end of the thing, he said, so what practical advice would you give, based on your research and all the people you've talked to, 
what people, can people do who are struggling with these things? And she basically had two things. But this is from research, not just her opinion. She said, put your phone down and go to church. Like that was a, because if you do, if you get away from superficial re- relationship and connection and start to build real connection in a place where you'll find deeper answers and connection, your life is going to be better. You're going to flourish in a powerful way. Now, I hope you think, because I do, that our church is already a healthy place where people can connect and explore and grow. And I've actually asked a few people to come up and just share for a minute or two about their experience of that already in the life of the church, what they love about it, how it's helped them or whatever. So I'm going to ask Aaron and Leon, and I'm not sure if I'm asking Dave or Michelle. Dave is going to come and speak for Michelle. So Dave, and I have another one that's going to be on video after those guys. So chop, chop, let's go. So Dave is Michelle today, okay? All right, so just remember that. Come on. And I did have, uh, Vicky was going to come, but they couldn't. She sent me a message. They had a family situation in Launceston. They had to pull out as well. Right, Aaron, this is all off the cuff, so don't worry. It should be right. I'll start with Leon, because you're my elder gentleman friend. Leon's been around the traps for a bit, and uh, in Brisbane and other places. So, Leon, uh, what, do you, what do you love about a church? How have you found it coming here in the last two years? Do you want to hold that? We used one of these for a while. <laughs> Jen and I uh, went back to Brisbane in 19, I mean 2014. We stayed there for about five years or four years, and we decided to come back to to, uh, <laughs> to Devonport again. Anyway, we got back got got back here in 2019, and uh, we uh, decided we well, we better, go, we better start going back to church again. Now, some of you know that I play a fair bit of bowls, and a lot of the bowls that uh, I played are on, played on Sundays. And uh, anyway, at the same time, God spoke to me and says, well, you've been playing bowls for a long, long time. You've won this and you've won that, and uh, you've really been to Mount Everest and back. There's no point going to Mount Everest again. He said, well, I'd like to see you back in church. Anyway, uh, we, hadn't been, we hadn't made up our mind which church we were going to go to. We could have went to the Church of Christ, and we could have went to the Baptist Church, and Don Road, we could have went down there. But uh, because uh, we're connected with the, uh, the Christian Brethren Assemblies, this is probably the logical place to come. Anyway, we uh, decided to come and uh, probably the most influence that was uh, with uh, Jen and I was Alan and Elsie. Alan and Elsie uh, kept in contact, uh, contact with us for about 20 years, on and off. And, uh, and so, uh, well, Jen and I said, decided, well, well, we'll come down to Old Acre Street, or Old Acre Street, whatever. And uh, here we are. How's it been? Been real, real good. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you like about it? When Dave came to me last Sunday and said, well, would, you, would you like to say something? I thought to myself, well, you know, you put me right on the spot, and I guess that's the best way to put people on the spot, whether they'll say yes or no. I said, yeah, and then I said to the Lord, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? He said, uh, you and I have been working with each other for nearly 60 years now. You should have something to say. <laughs> anyway, uh, what was that question again? Well, what do you like about it? Well, it's been good. Why has it been good? Well, the reason why we like it here because it's friendly. We know a few people. And uh, to be uh, with the Lord, you need to be with people to stay reasonably alive. Uh, you can survive outside the church, but it's good to be in the church. And this church is real, real, real good. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just suddenly right now about Leon and Jenny. This might embarrass them, but uh, I didn't know this till I went to visit and got talking to them. You know, over the years in Queensland, they did foster caring, uh, long term mostly foster caring for uh, kids who had family problems, and so they have had 
kids who've lived with them as their family, for some for a period of weeks, some for like 20 years, and they have had through their home over those years, 60 kids. Wow. Over years. 60 kids. He said, when Christmas comes, he gets calls from all over the place. Some don't call. Some he's lost touch with. Some are missionaries, some are doctors, some have been in jail, whatever. Like, just love them. And I just think, you don't know what people will do or have done in their life. So now everyone does know. Right, <laughs> Aaron, why don't you jump up? And oh, yeah, what am I doing? <laughs> Which one was I coming to take? Oh, that's a good coin. <laughs> All right, minute or two. What do you like about church, Aaron? Um, well, I'm going to talk about growth. Um, kind of, so I don't know how long ago it was, but I was asked to worship lead. I think, I can't remember, I think it was Michelle who asked me to do it. Um, and I did it with, with obviously, Michelle. Um, and at the time, I kind of sang a lot in my bedroom. I played guitar and piano in my bedroom. Um, and I guess I kind of felt that my voice, I wanted to keep hidden. Um, I kind of liked people not knowing that I could sing and that I liked to worship. I kind of had this sort of innate fear of like, what will people think of me? What will people say about me if they know that I can do this? Um, so, but I said, I said yes, and it was really scary. Um, and as I've sort of moved forward in worship leading and I've said yes to more and more times, God's really shown me that, hey, you've, I, want, I actually want you to speak to these people, to speak to the church and tell them a bit about yourself, a bit about what I've been telling you um, when you get up on stage. And um, so I got, I got a little bit better, a little bit better each time at worship leading and stepping out and then I kind of came to a little bit of a rough patch and I wanted to go back and hide um, and hide my voice um, but then you guys um, would like after I'd worship lead some of you guys would come up and be like hey I've, I've really enjoyed the worship today I love the choice of songs loved hearing up on stage and it was just those little little bits of encouragement and affirmation. You guys really pulled me through um, my rough patch. So I love this church because you guys are so, so encouraging and generous with your words and compliments. So thank you. Thanks, Aaron. That's good. That's good. Well done. Thanks, Aaron. That's good. That's a, yeah, you don't know the power of an encouraging word to somebody. Now, is this Michelle's thoughts, aren't they? Exactly Michelle's right thoughts. On. Yes. Um, it's interesting. I, uh, I was just reflecting on... We had no idea those were the, the new key words or the theme of moving forward, but as you'll soon see, Michelle's um, um, expression of her reflection on things is um, very much in line with those three words. So, in the words of Michelle, I had no influence on this at all. Uh, David Pearson asked me to speak about what I love about our church. What has God been doing in my life recently? And I can answer both of these questions with one word, community. Over the past few months, God has been teaching me about community, much more than just the people in our local area or the people with common interests, but community as an extension of family. When Dave, me Dave, husband Dave, and I think of our community, we think of our church at the centre of it now. As God is teaching me the richer meaning of community, one scripture keeps coming to mind, Matthew 12, 48 to 50. As an immature Christian, Jesus' words of, who is my mother and who are my brothers, seemed a bit harsh to me. But through God's gentle guidance in our church community, I've come to learn that Jesus was not lowering the status of his family to that of the crowd. Rather, he was lifting the disciples and the crowd to the status of his family. When he said, anyone who does the will of my Father in heaven is his family. His community, uh, sorry, and this community is an extension of that family. So thank you, my family, my brothers and sisters in Christ, for all the things our family receive from you. Oftentimes you might not even realise the blessings you have been to our family, uh, the children, as well as Dave, and, and especially me. Um, for instance, 
Thank you for the praise and worship songs that now um, waft through our home as we play them. Um, they were provided to us by Grace. Um, uh, and we were expecting a couple of songs. This is me speaking now. We were expecting a couple of songs. We actually got albums worth of uh, <laughs> worship songs. Our girls dance ballet to them when we play them, and the children now fall asleep to them at night time. Um, thank you to the kind leaders and helpers who teach our children. Um, especially, we probably haven't said thank you enough for the, the times, this is me speaking in, um, <laughs> Sunday school, <laughs> back to Michelle, uh, about who Jesus is, even missing out on the service yourselves and allowing us parents to a chance to listen to the preaching. Thank you for the genuine acceptance of our wriggling and squawking and squealing children as shown through in the kind smiles and the understanding eyes as you turn around to see where that noise came from. <laughs> That's my added in parenthesis. And thank you for the resources, both through preaching, sharing of life experience and sharing of books. These give me the confidence to know I can humbly answer questions now that may arise when I spend time with other mums who don't know Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Dave, Michelle. And I think we have one from Amira Dewey on video. She had to, short notice, she had to sneak into the bathroom because Edwin was asleep and make a little video on her phone and, and after a long day. So you'll get the gist of it as she does it. Hi, I'm Amira, for those of you that don't know me. Thank you, David, for asking me my thoughts on all of this. I hope I'm not the first one. Um, to keep this short and sweet, first of all, I'm pregnant. I am so out of breath and I am so sorry. <laughs> and I'm also in the bathroom, so it's a little bit echoey. But we just wanted to say we really love Old Acre. And when we got married, we were only 18 and 19. We'd been at the one church our whole like life. And that was great, but we wanted something to build a family in where we could be us and not like the Kayla's Families Association, which is fine, like the world is connections, right? But we just wanted something for our own. And um, I was working at Camp Clayton and Mel and Michelle were like, hey, do you want to come to our church? And we were like, yeah, why not? Like, that'd be great. We tried a few prior to that and it just, didn't feel like home and um, <sighs> um, also our friends Aaron and Seth were here and we were like, yeah, let's do it. And um, pretty much straight away, David and Liesl were amazing. Um, they made the connections where they could. They remembered our names. Like the next week we came in, we just felt so welcome. They got us um, involved in the young adults and <laughs> oh, I'm so out of breath. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it's just been really great. Like we have made some lifelong friends being here and it's just been crazy. Like I'm pregnant with my second baby. Like these people get to be a part of all of these special moments. Um, just really fun. Um, we are so blessed to have such amazing people in our life. Um, and it's not even just like when you turn up to church, like it's just all the time people checking in and saying, hey, do you want to catch up a coffee or do you want to come play a board game? And it's really nice. Um, like they carry the culture of what Jesus would do and we are just in love with that. So yeah, so excited to raise my babies here. Um, yeah, so thanks David and Liesl for being amazing and to everyone else for just making it great. All the generations, we're really blessed. Uh, I love how she's excited to raise her family in the church community. Right, so in this next season, we want to continue to connect and explore and grow together, but with an even greater sense of love and unity and life. And aside from prayer and God's continued blessing on us, just want to mention three practical things that we're going to need for that to happen. One is we will need um, a sense of leadership from us as leaders. I'm not sure. Can you just move that forward if it's, something's gone wrong there? And one more. So, sense of leadership for, require us to provide um, opportunities for people to connect and explore and go. A sense of participation. Um, thanks, Shay. It will require all of us to actually be people who want to connect and explore and grow, okay? And who take responsibility for that in our own lives in deeper ways. 
I can't do it for you, you can't do it for me, but we can look out for each other and take responsibility for these things in our own life as well. To be people who step up, step up and participate in church life, not just to spectate. And thirdly, there is an element in which we need some financial support as well for that, for this new season that we're heading into. In the past season, we have been very blessed. You have all been very generous, and we say thank you to that. It's a generous church. And we've had some extra financial help uh, from our denomination. Um, we've had, I've had, there's been two grants associated with my position for the last three years, and there's been a grant associated with Joe's position for the last four years, but those are finished now. And so in this new season, we're on our own. So we just want to ask all of you, uh, as we ask ourselves, if this is your home church, just to consider that. Consider whether maybe you can um, consider your giving, whether you might be able to increase it, you maybe you're not. Or maybe you could be more consistent by using the direct uh, debit sort of thing. But just to be clear, there's no pressure here about money. This is not a money pressure church, um, and it never will be. But we just wanted to be honest about that um, reality. I just want to finish by looking at one passage, because I just have to do that. From Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, it says, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But what about you? He said, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone this significant thing that he had told them. This is a really significant account of Jesus revealing his identity and his mission to his best friends, his followers, his disciples. He asked them a couple of questions. Who do people say that I am? It's kind of interesting to know what the common thought is out there, but it's not the most important thing. He asked them a really important question. Who do you say that I am? That one mattered. And Peter answered it correctly with some God-given insights. So it didn't matter what everyone else thought out there in the streets and on the wherever. It mattered what they thought. Who did they understand him to be? And once they had that right, Jesus felt free to share more of his identity and what he was going to do, what he was on about. And he says that through you, Peter, and on this rock of this declaration that you've made, this solid rock of a declaration, <laughs> I'm going to build my church, my people, my community. And the forces of darkness, the oppressive regimes and systems and ideologies of the world, the gates of hell itself will not be able to stand against it or overcome it. Now, Jesus' claim probably didn't seem that impressive at the time because he's way up north in Caesarea Philippi, um, probably 40, 50 k's north of Galilee, which is in the north of Israel. And it's pagan territory. This is the headquarters of the pagan worship of the god Pan, uh, it's a city that's dominated. It sits at the base of Mount Hermon. There's a big rock face there. And in front of that was a white marble temple that Herod had built to honour the Roman Emperor Augustus. Very impressive. And Jesus is standing there with his ragtag band of, bag, band of 12 kind of goons, uneducated guys, talking about changing the world and the gates of hell not being able to overcome what he's about to do. So if we'd been there, we might have wondered whether this was actually going to happen. But it happened. Not long after this, the Church of Jesus was born in a dramatic day, a dramatic movement of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost, with a bang. And Peter stood up, that same Peter, and preached a Spirit-inspired, compelling sermon. And 3,000 people believed in Jerusalem that day and were baptised. And the Church was born. And from that time, the Church of Jesus, with all its mistakes and failings and funny people and all that sort of thing, has continued to grow and continued to be built up. And it's still growing and still changing people's lives today. And it has not been overcome. And it will not be overcome. Because its growth and its strength are fundamentally a work of God's Spirit. Built on the truth of who Jesus is and built in partnership with his faithful followers, men and women and young people and children who understand who he is, and understand his love for them and live for him as their first priority. And we're part of it. Little old us. Just a part of it, just a small part, but still an important part. And it's no small thing to be part of a healthy church community. When we participate in it, we're actually participating in the eternal plans and purposes of God. It's not 
It's no small thing. So let's move into a season of connecting and exploring and growing together and invite others into that. Invite others into that. And let's embrace that in our own lives. Now to finish off, I'm going to ask Steve and Richard, our current two elders, going to come up and close in prayer and maybe say something, I'm not sure. But, uh, and then we'll sing and then stay around and have coffee and tea and connect with some people and whatever. Who's going first? Leave first. What are you eating? Oh, my favourite moment. It's really great to um, have you all here the, uh, in church. And there's, uh, there are lots of visitors and it's, it's great to be a part of a church that is um, so welcoming. Um, when Nat and I arrived in Tassie um, in 1999, last century, um, we, um, we came to this church first. We had one connection in Tasmania, that was it. Um, and it happened to be with this church. And, uh, we were living in Burnie at the time. And we thought, oh, we'll come across and we'll come to this church. It's our only connection to Tasmania, um, having moved from Queensland. And... Um, we came and we sat through the service and we went, oh, we cannot get out of here quick enough. Um, it, it was so different to what we had grown up in um, and it, it didn't seem to us to have a great deal of life at the time. And, um, but as chance would happen, there was a lunch on after church and we had Simon with us and you know, Nat and I were keen to get out of here and he was keen to stay. Um, so we stayed. And... Um, and we got invited, you know, David and Lisa were here, we got invited um, to lunch, I think, or dinner in the first week. Um, and our intention to look around at churches um, between Devonport and Burnie never happened. Um, we came here on the first Sunday, we were in Tasmania. And we're here 20, can't do 24 years later. Um, and I, look, I, I think, to be honest, the people in the church um, are part of the reason that our one or two year trip to Tasmania just to have a bit of a look around and adventure when we were newly married turned into our life in Tasmania. Um, and seven kids later, it's nowhere near 60, Leon, but um, some days it feels like it. Um, <laughs> but um, our family has been so blessed um, by being here and we have been blessed um, by raising our children in this place and we've been blessed by the teaching and by the community. Um, we've heard about um, connections and the encouragement of community um, and yeah, I cried this morning um, and that's a good thing, it's a beautiful thing. Um, and I loved what Amira said, I don't know if you caught it, right towards the end. Um, she said that people carry the culture of what Jesus would do and you do, you really do. Um, we're in a community that carries the culture of what Jesus would do, um, and that's a powerful thing. Um, I might hand over to Richard. I, I was gonna, no, I'm going to hand over to Richard, and Richard's going to—he's um, going to pray, pray for us. And um, are we just so thankful that you are here, and that we are part of community and part of family. So thank you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Steve. I, um, I've got one up on you. I think I've been here 58 years at this church. So. <laughs> and uh, appa a apparently I was a real pain and one of those children that crawled under all the chairs and, you know, so, so Dave, you've got nothing to worry about down there. It's all good. Um, yeah, as, I guess as Steve has said, you know, it's just, um, it's nothing about the building. It's the church and it's the people and, and we're just so blessed and thankful we've had this wonderful, you know, time of uh, unity and, and support um, as leaders and I just wanted to say thank you for that and um, we're trusting God for the future and uh, let me just let me just pray for us all and um, and you know particularly though just wanted to I, I guess a special call out to, to David and Joe um, we have been super blessed by their teaching and encouragement and um, yeah just their love for people both you know from, from a youth perspective as well, and uh, um, we just, yeah, thank you for that. And I know there's lots of other people we could, you know, be thankful for too, but um, I can't, can't call out everyone, but uh, you guys, you know, we just thank you so much. Uh, let, let me just pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your provision to us as a church in so many ways. Thank you for blessing us um, over these recent years in this place and uh, in our lives. We thank you for the unity of spirit, um, for the care and love shown to one another um, by each other in both times of, of hardship and, uh, and times of happiness. Each person, each family um, are here making up your church, your bride. Help us, Lord, to be worthy of your goodness and, uh, and saving grace to us. Thank you for the people giving their time freely to be your hands and feet, uh, both here in our church, in our community, around our city, um, and in our world. Give us wisdom and love as we strive to show the love of Jesus to a world in, in desperate need of just that. We have so many things going on when we think about this church, this small church, Bible studies, home groups, services at Meercroft and Karingu, Kids Connection, leaders and teachers, helpers, lunches, supporting camp and leadership over there, music, media, prayer. Um, thank you for each one and their willingness to serve here at this church and to serve you. And as I said before, we're particularly thankful for David and Joe for providing us with wonderful Bible centered teaching. Um, their servant leadership, care and love for your church and uh, your people, our youth, is a great blessing to us all. Lord, you know our heart. We thank you for what has been, for what has passed and, and look forward to what lies ahead as we seek your continued blessing and provision and may the desire of our heart be passion and love for you to be always Jesus' people as we connect, explore and grow together. May we all do this for your glory and for your kingdom, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, Sam, we're going to see